What's going on as well to our video and today we're going to be doing a Chelsea Youth Roundup, Academy Roundup of what's been going on so far this season, catching up with all the results, how the youth team are going and also the stars that are performing the best for the youth team right now and you could potentially see paving their way into the first team throughout the season because we know Graham Potter likes to give young players chances as can be seen by Chukwameka getting so many minutes now, not just consolation minutes but minutes to actually impact games so it's a very good time to do this video, I've also obviously done a lone army roundup video a week or so ago so it's only right i do a youth team video so you guys are filled up on all the action going on just before we start the video do make sure to like the video i want to try and get this video to 100 likes and if you can help me along with that that would be absolutely brilliant i'm trying to get towards 2000 subscribers so make sure to subscribe to the channel and press the bell notification so you never miss an upload and comment down below which youngster you are most excited about who you want to see in the first team right sooner rather than later so without further ado Let's get into the video. So first, let's do a little overview of what's actually happened in the youth team and then go on to individuals. It's been a bit of a shake-up this season. Obviously, we brought in quite a few youth talents over the summer that I spoke about in my Chelsea Youth Season preview. And then we also brought in a new coach, Mark Robinson from AFC Wimbledon. And to me, this season has been very, very up and down, but it's going on a really, really good trajectory right now. So to break our teams up, we've got the under-21s, who used to be the under-23s, and we've got the under-18s. We've also got a separate competition called the UEFA Youth League, which obviously runs in tandem with the Champions League that is made up of under 19s obviously a mix of our under 18s and our under 21s so the three main competitions we'll be talking about today is the PL2 which our under 21s play in the UEFA Youth League which our under 19s play in which and also the Papa John's EFL Trophy which is just like the Carabao Cup of youth teams so overall from those three competitions we have a record it's a very mixed record we have six wins six draws and five losses now do bear with me because it sounds a lot worse than it might actually be because a lot of of our bad form has been concentrated in one competition very specifically and that is the UEFA Youth League where we have played four games we have drawn two and lost two we haven't picked up a single win now the reasoning for this I mean obviously you could just have poor form but actually it's because of having a mix between the under 18s and the under 21s this caused a lot of problems for example this year instead of the under 21s manager taking over the youth team Chelsea decided to put the under 18s manager in, in charge of that and if you look at each lineup a lot of them are quite different for these games because sometimes they'll use more of the under 18s sometimes they'll use more of the under 21s for example, for one of the UEFA Youth League games this season, we actually had a game against Oxford United in the EFL Trophy, which meant that most of our under-21s who played in that game didn't play in the UEFA Youth League game, which obviously puts us at a bit of a disadvantage. So that competition has heavily swayed the result. In the EFL Trophy, which is when you play clubs from League 1 and League 2, so it's professional football, it puts you up against them. We've won two games and lost one. And then in the PL2, we've had a mixed bag of four wins, four draws and two losses. But there is positivity. In the PL2, Chelsea have fifth place but that's only two points off the top so it's still very much an open race we have played one more game than the top team but it's still very much an open race and it's got a lot more positive of recent we are unbeaten in our last eight games that's five wins in our last eight games and if you look at just our last five games we've managed to pick up four wins in just those five games so it's really really got positive and even when we look at these results we've really improved during that period because throughout the season there's been little hiccups that have dropped us very important points but that will improve as the season goes on there's two examples of games against Crystal Palace and against Manchester United. Against Manchester United, Chelsea under 21s were 3-1 up in the 94th minute and they let in two goals in the 95th and the 96th minute to draw the game 3-3. And a similar thing happened at Crystal Palace when they were two goals ahead with 10 minutes to go and they bottled it to draw the game. So obviously this is worrying stuff with the youth team, but it actually shows a lot of progression with the team. They've come together as a unit and over time, those results have started to fade away and you can see it with the consistency we're building up now with four wins in the last five. That is looking really Really positive and I think this season could be one of those classic Chelsea youth seasons when they win a lot of trophies because the cohesion in the squad the quality in the squad is honestly really really high now we've talked about the team in itself but I know why most of you guys clicked on this video is to find out who are the next future stars at Chelsea so we're going to be talking through them and if you're here for Amari Hutchinson just stick around until the end of the video because I have placed them at the end just so you guys stick around and do watch this whole video because he definitely is an exciting player to talk about but the first player we're going to talk about is a slightly lower profile one very underrated I'm going to be talking about Ben. Elliot. Back when he was 14 years old, he was actually one of the biggest prospects in the country, but the problem with Ben Elliott was that he was getting a lot of injuries, and even up until last season, he constantly got injured, and it constantly got on his way back. We started our last seven games in a row, and his quality from back in the day when he was one of the highest rated people in the country is starting to show through. He's playing really, really well. I've got my stats here that he's already picked up four assists this season and one goal, playing mainly as an attacking midfielder, but also at the left wing. He's a really silky player, always has an eye for a pass, always just jinking in and out of players 
honestly he's such an interesting player to watch and it's a player that I'm wondering whether underratedly will make that run into the first team because people can't forget how much of a prospect he was when he was younger a couple of injuries got on his way but now he seems to have got past that and he looks like a really really top quality player probably a low move up next but I just wanted to mention him because no one ever talks about him but he really is a player to remember and just as a little prediction thing he got his first goal of the season in our last game versus Blackburn in like the 94th minute but the goals are going to start flowing in even more you're going to see this guy near the top of the charts he's just been getting a bit unlucky with his chances in each game playing really well but not always coming out in goals and assists because obviously he hadn't been playing that much the consistency wasn't there but I back him now to fully go on a run of scoring goals getting assists constantly he's a really really exciting player so the next player we're going to talk about is actually one of the youngest players, the youngest player on this list. His name is Leo Castle, and he's one of the highest rated players in the academy. This is such such a big talent. A lot of you would have seen his goal against Fulham last year in the final of the Premier League Cup, which was the opening goal, and we won that game and won the Premier League Cup against Fulham, who was one of the best academies. But this guy is so highly rated. One of the benefits from him is that he's born in August. Such a big positive because it basically means that his progression has been fast-tracked by about a year because he's been allowed to get a scholarship a year earlier. A lot of people who got their scholarships this year, which is obviously when you get a two-year contract, are actually pretty much the same age as Leo, just born about a month later, so it's been really good for him. But also a testament to his quality has been managed to keep up and not keep up but actually excel with players that often are a whole year older than him and when you're at such a young age being a whole year older is a huge huge difference but he's one of the highest rated players in the country for England he's constantly captaining them he's been playing between our under 20 and under 21s I think soon he will be fully into our under 21s in that 4 2 formation he plays as a left winger or an attacking midfielder but this season he has been thrown all over the place and it shows how useful he is that he's gone he's played left wing attacking midfield striker right wing and you're not going to believe this he played right centre back and left centre back I had no idea he could do this I remember in pre-season he played one game as a centre back and I thought okay this is clearly just something that they had to do because they didn't have enough players there and obviously it is something that happens when they have an injury crisis but it happened again in our last game he plays as a centre back and actually we got the clean sheet versus Blackburn in a 3-0 win so clearly he was pretty decent but he isn't a centre back going forward he absolutely is and he's too good going forwards but it's so interesting to see someone play as a centre back even though they're a left winger or attacking midfielder so that's enough on Leo but pretty much he's a really really talented player captains most of the sides that he's in playing so much higher up in terms of age than he should be left winger attack midfielder great eye for goal a lot of people have liked him to Grealish which has a lot to do with his hair because he does put his hair in a headband but you can kind of see a similar play style some say it's not but the way he cuts in off the left not you really a pace merchant more of like an intricate player likes to create I think he's really really good played up front this season played on the left played in the middle played at centre back really really listen out for the name Leo Castledine right now we're getting to three big names. The ones I talk about a lot on my Twitter account, those are Lewis Hall, Charlie Webster, and Amari Hutchinson. The first player we're going to talk about is Charlie Webster, but really, is there much for me to say? You guys, by now, should be experts on him. The amount of times I've spoken about him, the amount of times i tweet about him, you guys should know. I like to call him the Cobham Kovacic. He's such a silky player, plays as an eight, can play in a double pivot with Lewis Hall, which is what he's mainly been doing this season, and he's so, so good. This guy runs games. He's got an eye for goal. He likes to prop around it on the edge of the box, or sometimes like his goal against Arsenal, where he just dribbled straight straight through the whole team and shot but he's got a brilliant pass on him his IQ is incredible he's such a silky player drop the shoulder gets past players and he's someone that's already been noticed by Graham Potter because multiple weeks where when the youth team had a game on that weekend Charlie Webster would train with the first team all the way up to the Friday and then he'd go off on the Saturday to the youth team and that is really all we can ask for right now it'd be nice to see it translate to minutes but he's important for the youth team the youth team can't lose him and also there's not always that much space in the Chelsea team but when we play Man City on that Carabao Cup game I believe it's something like November 9th then that's a game where we'd like to see Charlie Webster involved maybe in the squad because he's clearly someone that Graham Potter likes he's called him up to first team training multiple times since he's come in and I think that's someone that Graham Potter is really really going to like the next player we're going to talk about is someone that I absolutely rave about and I've been raving about him for so so long I was the first person maybe apart from Chelsea youth but I was the first person to talk about this guy Lewis Hall I talk, talked about him in September 2021 just after he got a scholarship because I noticed him in a lot of the youth team videos that I saw constantly Constantly just banging in assists. The guy's creativity was out of this world, and since then I've noticed him even more. His dribbles is insane. He literally just glides past players. His pace and power is incredible. His shot is brilliant too. So much power on it. His vision, his versatility, he has it all. And this season has been probably his best season to date. He's second in our youth team's four goals and assists. He's got five goals a season and four assists. And mostly this season he's been playing as a defensive midfielder. So this shows just how involved he gets. He either plays as the lone six in the 4-3-3 or in the 
double pivot in a 4-2-3-1 with Charlie Webster, where obviously you can interchange who goes forwards, who goes backwards, but it's a relatively defensive position. And even midfield, you don't expect someone to get that involved in the goals and assists, but you can see it. And some of his goals that I post it on Twitter all the time, you can see the quality in those goals. He had a beautiful one against Oxford United. He had a beautiful one against Salzburg. I remember these goals. And he obviously has also played as a left wing back at times, which has helped him with his assists from the side. Now, I don't want anyone to get mistaken. He is a midfielder. There's too much misconceptions about Lewis Hall. People remember that game he played in the FA Cup last year where he plays the left centre back, but he is not a left centre back. That's just testament to his versatility. He is a midfielder and he can fill in at left wing back, left centre back, and maybe various other positions, but purely he is a midfielder and that's where you want to keep him progressing. And he's playing so, so well. He's also obviously a younger player. So he really, really is doing so well to be performing at this level to have nine goals and assists from midfield, primarily as a defensive midfielder. It's incredible to see. He's already been involved in first team training a couple times under Potter and hopefully he continues to get called up and Potter likes what he sees. Now the last player we're going to talk about is the player that you guys have been waiting for this whole video because the hype around this guy is out of this world and for good reason. Amari Hutchinson has lit the world alight at Chelsea and am I surprised? Absolutely not because if you guys watched any of the youth videos I made over the summer talking about our new signings, you know I raved about Amari Hutchinson. The second I found out that we signed him when the Secret Scout put out that Instagram post saying we'd signed him, I was so gassed because I watched this guy tear Chelsea apart when he was playing for Arsenal last season and then doing front flips and back flips while celebrating goals. Well, now we've got him and he's doing it for us and he's been absolutely exceptional for the youth team. He's already the top goal contributor in our team. He's got 12 goals and assists this season. It would have been one more if he slotted away a penalty, but he missed it. He's had four open play goals and one penalty and he's had seven seven assists although i have counted a penalty winning a penalty as an assist so he actually has six open play assists and one penalty that he won and then slotted away and then one penalty that he won and then missed but i didn't count that with that penalty win because he didn't slot it away so it's not an assist but either way this guy i don't know how much i need to say because you guys have seen all the highlights i've posted but he is so good he gets the ball off that right wing but really he ends up anyway picks up the ball and he just drives he's so direct and i'm sorry that's something that when you look at this first team there is not enough direct wingers there is not enough pace power dribbling at players 1v1 quality and the one thing that there's definitely not enough of in this first team that is creativity and Amari Hutchinson's creativity in the bag every single day of the week his passing is incredible and he's on such hot form right now in his last two games I think he's got two assists one goal at two games ago and in the last game he got a goal and then he also got an assist so that is five goal contributions in his last two games he's on fire and we need to get this guy involved in first team training just like Carney Chukwemeka because he is just as big of a talent as Chukwemeka if he represented England and not Jamaica he'd be involved in all the youth team squads I can 100% guarantee that and we need to start treating him like Chukwemeka if you ask me and getting him some first team minutes or at least putting him in first team training and then translating that in the future with Carabao Cup minutes but honestly this guy is such big talent and the fact we got him of Arsenal is so so huge he's also not just a creative winger his eye for goal is brilliant he almost scored a ridiculous free kick earlier in the season which you guys may have seen that I posted from about 30 yards just absolutely banged it and it hit the inside of the post I'm so excited about this guy he's such a good player watch any of his highlights anywhere just search for Mario Hutchinson go on his Twitter he has compilations of himself up there get excited about this guy his one of a left foot get him in over Ziyech I'm telling you right now get him in over Ziyech Amari Hutchinson is that guy but there you go I do hope you enjoyed this video hopefully we see some of these YouTube players getting first team minutes in the future and you know even if they don't they can always move on to other clubs and have great full careers I'm not asking for every single youth team player to make it even though some people make it seem like I do I'm just calling out the ones that have that best chance because they've been really really impressing this season so once again if you enjoyed this video make sure to like subscribe comment and I will see you next time